Thank you so much, choir. We appreciate your singing. The words of that song are so important. People need the Lord. I kind of wanted to start off the sermon this morning by acknowledgement of saying, Good morning, saints. Good morning, saints. And also, good morning, sinners. Good morning, sinners. It reminds us of our mortality and who we are. Uh, one of the great teachers, Lynn's uh, sweet, he, uh, any one of his uh, teaching moments or time he gets up in front of people he says good morning saints and good morning sinners and we all acknowledge that we are there we are there there was a story about a minister that was walking down the street and uh, as he was walking along he noticed a young boy up ahead of him up on the, a porch trying to ring a doorbell this doorbell seemed to be, able to be a little bit higher than most of them and he just could not get quite enough up there to ring it. So the minister stepped up on the porch and says, here, I'll help you, young man. And the, the minister rang the doorbell and banged on the door and looked at the little boy and he says, now what do we do? He says, I usually run. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do next? What, what do we go? We, we often uh, understand maybe the concept of sinners better than we do saints because uh, we seem to from time to time fit that role better. We are all in acknowledgement of our need of, of God in our life and Jesus in our life. And, but this morning I'd like to look just a little bit out of two passages, one from Ephesians 2 and one then the great one talking about the great litany of the saints that gone on before us in Hebrews 11. The word we want to talk about this morning is by faith, by faith. Looking at a passage from Ephesians, 2, 8 through 10. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from ourself. It is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So we are His. We are His. This workmanship that he has created in us for to do good work is prepared for us. It, it seems as if the grace of God is just bestowed upon us. And, and the word handiwork here is very, very uncommon. It's only used one other time in Romans. It talks about their, of the great work of creation itself in Romans 1.20. This handiwork we have is created by Jesus Christ. We know that God comes into our lives and saves us and makes us have a right relationship when we believe on him. And then we begin the workmanship of knocking off the edges. We are no longer who we used to be. We are Christ. And uh, it is such a privilege to know that, that God's at work. It's kind of like uh, self-portraits of ourselves. One of the most interesting things that, if you, well, have you ever noticed a bird fighting another bird in a mirror or in the door. You know, actually what they end up doing, they're fighting themselves. And I've seen that many times. There was a, a particular window at, at the Science Hill down in the basement that this cardinal, he would come every morning and just beat that guy up and then would leave. But one of the most funniest things I saw recently was a large crow. He was out here out back fighting himself in one of the back doors he could see that reflection he was going at it but but what this word means is it's something much deeper we see within us the great value the workmanship of Jesus Christ in our life he's at work creating godlike images in us he creates within us his spirit he takes off the edges he takes off and cleans us up not only cleans us up he takes away those those rough things now, I know some of you spouses have been working on your husband for years, you know, trying to, trying to clean him up a little bit and, and trying to knock off the worst edges, trying to teach him a little bit of etiquette, a little bit of manners, you know. And from time to time, you know how I know that? I mean, I can tell by the way you look at your spouse. 
You know, you've got those looks, haven't you? Just like I see those now that you're giving each other. But I hope what you realize that God is working on that man. God is working on that woman. And we're all, thank God, we're not what we used to be. But the good news is we're not what we're going to be. God is at work. It means that God is, is taking us as we are, reproducing himself in us, reproducing the uniqueness we have. Says that he created creation that way, of, as I mentioned in Romans 1.20. The idea there that if God can create the heavens and the earth, the stars, the moon, and all this glorious thing that we're enjoying, all the beautiful trees and all the beautiful colors, then surely... He can work on us if we let him. So being his and, and developing to be like a saint, uh, we are so fearfully and wonderfully made that uh, even one strand of our DNA cannot be put on one computer, one small computer. We, it's just amazing who we are, God's creation. He builds in us his word and prayers and circumstances in our lives. He builds in us activity. So we were created for what? To do good works. This is by faith, not of ourselves. God has prepared these things for us. It's through faith that he is working with us and through us. No matter where we are, no matter where we're at. Christ at work in our lives changes us. We know that faith itself cannot change us, but we also know that our works are a result of our faith in Jesus Christ. Years ago, there was a drunken man in Chicago. He was headed down towards Lake Michigan to drown himself when he stumbled by the door of the Pacific Garden Mission. He went inside and fell asleep. The superintendent there cared for him, woke him up, gave him a bed the next morning. His name was Harry Monroe. His life was transformed by the grace of God that day when the superintendent told him about Jesus and all of that. He quit drinking. He quit running around. And when he died, it took a whole day for people to pass by and offer those respects to him. You see, he had done so much for the mission. He had done so much for his community that when he gave his life to Christ, that, that, that image of who he was changed and he became a saint. God's works are meant to direct the people to seeing him and seeing an activity of other. The light that we see in our brothers is a work of God. The work that we do in 2 Corinthians 9 reminds about what Christ is doing for us. Colossians 1.10 said we should be fruitful in every good work. 2 Timothy 3, 17 it says we are thoroughly equipped for everything that God has for us. So we are the workmanship created by Christ. In other words, we are to be the saints. So now I'd like to change gears a bit and look at Hebrews 11. You all know this great litany here talking about those that are faithful. But I'd like to read just a few verses Verses 1 through 3. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. You say, now, how am I going to believe in something I don't see? You use so much blind faith all the time. You, you just use it. And, you know, in, in driving your car, you just assume and have faith that when you put your, your foot on the brake, it's going to stop. Then you assume when you put it in one of the gears, it's going to go there. You just assume those kind of things. But faith is confidence in what we hope for. This is what the ancients were commended for. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. And then the, down near the end, after it talks about the long litany, it says, these were all com commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. Now, isn't that something? 
started the journey. Abram left Haran and started the journey. So interesting, Haran was a civilized area at that time. It was a, 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 a the best place that you could live on the face of the earth at the time. They had building and structures, they had water, they had so many things, but Abram left Haran because he thought God was calling him out. So he left all those comfortable amenities that he had and followed after God. And he never did get to understand and see all God was going to give him. He says, out of you, Abraham, I'm, going to, I'm just going to flourish the whole earth to the point that your, your children, your children's children, on and on, will be like the stars in the heaven. He didn't get to see that, but he was faithful to God. He was faithful. We have many other examples there. By faith, it tells us in verse 4 that Abel offered to, to God a more excellent sacrifice. The thing when Cain and Abel was is not that God hated one or the other, is one of them gave their best and the other one didn't. And that's what caused the problem. By faith, Enoch was taken away so he did not see death. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household. Probably there was never been rain and Noah's building a, book, a boat for a flood. That doesn't make sense, does it? It really doesn't make sense that someone would build a boat and there never had been torrential rains and those kind of things. It doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? But out of faith, he did. Out of faith, he did. By faith, they did these things. By faith, God works in our lives. You all have heard all the many, many stories about faith, haven't you? The man that's driving around a, a crooked road in the middle of the dark night, and his car runs off the road. He's thrown out of the car, and he grabs a limb, begins to pray to God that God would come and just wonderfully save him, that everything would be fine. And God answered his prayer. He said, turn loose, my son. There's a ledge right below you, about six inches. The man thought for a few minutes. Well, is there anybody else up there that can help me? You see, we, we, we pray by faith. And sometimes I think God gives us the answers, but we really don't like the answer he gives us, do we? By faith, we know the many that's gone on before us, not only from this facility, but the one you had down Tara, and also too from the, the other churches in which you grew up in. I know you won't believe this, but I wasn't the best Sunday school pupil around. I was just a bit mischief. I, uh, I learned a lot from my Sunday school teachers, though. One of the things that was so interesting is, is Miss Berry would always love me and care for me. She would always correct me, but in such a tone of voice that I had to listen to it. She never did marry, but she said she has her children all those that would come to her Sunday school class. You all could tell stories about Sunday school teachers, about men and women who held firm to the faith, believed in the faith. When Brother Moran died a, a few weeks ago, in my conversations with him on the Friday before the Tuesday in which he died, he said these words. He said, you know, I never thought it'd end this way. And I was thinking, he trusted God, trusted everything, but he was hoping that he'd be caught up in the rapture. He was praying for that. And he was, but he went up individually. 
You all know saints of the church and saints that you love and care for. But God has a plan for us. When we make mistakes, he's got He's always working with us and through us and, in my case, in spite of me from time to time. We go, in verse 11 there, it says, By faith Sarah herself received strength to conceive her seed. It took a little bit of encouragement, I think, from Abraham for Sarah to have a baby. Uh, and from God, too, if you remember the story. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed his sons and of Joseph. By faith, Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents. By faith, Moses, when he became aged, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And we see on and on, by faith. You say, well, preacher, I may be a slow learner. And you may be. You remember that there are 40-year cycles in, uh, in, in Moses' story. There's 40 years in Egypt and 40 years in the wilderness. Uh, I mean, in, in uh, taking care and preparing yourself. And then 40 years when he got his children, when God had God's children out of Egypt. And then they wandered for 40 more years. God is faithful no matter how old you are. You see, I read my Bible quite often. I do not see a retirement plan for any of us. We're to be faithful. By faith, we continue to be faithful. By faith. I know that you could probably mention several other people that you love and care about that have gone on before us. I know that you could probably mention... Uh, Saints of, of caliber that, that I might not have got to know. But there have been a few in our lives. I can remember professors at seminary that are now gone on. Professors at college. I had one named Dr. C.V. Hunter when I was uh, in college. I was so discouraged. I started back college when I was 29 years old. And I was taking his philosophy class. And the very first test I took was from his class. And it took him an hour to explain his grading system. If you know the, the bell curve system in which he graded from. And when he got through, we all just sat there with our mouths open. And uh, he said, Wayne, I want to see you after class. I said, sure, Dr. Hunter. He said, now, I went into his room and in his office and he was so gracious to me. You see, I got a D on my first test back. I got a D. I, I thought I had studied. I thought I had knew, but I got a D. Well, he sat me down and began to talk to me. He says, Wayne, I know this doesn't reflect you. I know you can do better than this, but I want to encourage you. This is not a bad D. It's a good D. I'm going, a good D? Yeah, he said it's kind of on the higher side of the D. It's a little bit below a C minus. It's a D plus. He was so gracious to me. I ended up passing a class, I think, with a B minus. But anyway, he was so gracious to me. Those kind of saints, those you remember from time to time. On this All Saints Sunday, as we are preparing to take communion and as you prepare through your day, uh, just thank God for saints that come into your mind. Uh, just continue to reflect about those kind of saints. And I want to tell this to you too, that no matter what age you are now, you could be a saint if you just trust God. That you're faithful to the point of the end. That you allow God to use you and you're aware of his working in your life. You can be a saint. So... Saint has very little to do with age or IQ of anything. It has a lot to do with graciousness. That's what personifies a saint. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the saints in our lives. Those that some have done passed on, some may be living of older age, and we appreciate them. We ask now as we prepare for communion, Father, we would be mindful and think about those saints. 
Some of them we took communion with before and they're not around now. But we want to say thank you for those that faithfully lived and faithfully died. So be with us in our time as we take communion. In Jesus' name, amen.